Hey everyone, here's a thought experiment for you. Imagine a perfect world where if you read anything once, it would get fitted into your memory permanently and you would never forget it. Do you think examinations would be difficult then? This shows us that the intrinsic problem does not lie in the examination. The problem lies in the preparation for examination. And answer me this, has this ever happened to you before? You were very motivated to read a topic and you actually read that topic completely and understood it. Two weeks later, when your friend phones you up to ask you about it, you have forgotten it. What this tells us is that all the information that we read has a half-life. You know, a time after which information starts to fade away gradually until you lose all of it. I like to call this the read, understand, forget and repeat cycle. And in a few minutes, I will show you how you can break this cycle and set yourself free. This not only applies for university examinations, but for any examinations ever. From what I've learned, storing information in your brain is an exchange. You have to take information and then you have to give information. The more you take in, the more sensory input there is, the more you acquire short term knowledge. And the more motor output there is, the more that short term knowledge is converted into long term knowledge. So it's always an exchange and interplay of sensory and motor within your brain. See everything in our brain is stored in the form of connections between neurons. And the more you use these connections, that is the more you revise a particular thing, the more likely is that this connection will not degrade and will not go down. And learning anything new is just basically increasing the amount of connections that are present between the neurons which are already there in your brain. Assimilating information, that is learning new things, is mostly sensory. I mean, ask yourself, how do you acquire new information? You either hear it or you see it. You hear it in video lectures, in audio files, in podcasts, and you look at it in books, in videos, and again, the most important one being here is books. And since all of you have books, this is what I'm going to be focusing on today. Reading anything for the first time can be like walking on a foreign country, where all you have to do is map out every single detail with a pen and a paper. What I mean by that is that, for example, you're reading something such as head and neck in anatomy. The first step should be that you should just map out all the different structures that there are present. For example, the parotid gland, the muscles of mastication, the facial nerve and all of that. Anatomy is beautiful. And after you've done mapping all of these structures, not necessarily knowing all the details about them, but, but now you know what the different structures that are present. You have a basic idea about what the subject is saying and what the subject wants to tell you. This is the first read and it is the foundation of anything. This should be very strong, cover every single thing that you can possibly think of. So this was your first layer of information. And this is the strongest pillar, also known as foundation of anything. If you forget this, then you'll have to start it all over again. Okay, so the new synapses are done. You have mapped out everything and now you know where everything lies in that particular subject and what that subject has to tell you. The next step is consolidation. And here what you are going to do is uh, encode this synapses in a much better way by not just using your eyes and ears that is the sensory component of your body but actually by using the motor component of your body that is your speech and your hands. You can use your speech to teach, to narrate, to do all sorts of things and you can use your hands to write, to take notes, make diagrams and make flowcharts. The basic neurology here too is the same. The more number of synapses you generate, the better the encoding of the information is present in your brain. And do you know what thing in the brain develops more synapses than the other things? My friends, the answer is emotion. If you have any sort of memory that is very emotional to you, it is very less likely that you're going to be forgetting that in the near future or even in the distant future. But those things which you do away from your heart, like outside of your heart, that those things won't be in your brain for as long as that you want to be. For example, if you're studying something with a mind that is negative and saying that I don't love this subject, it's most likely that you will not end up retaining that information for a longer period of time. So the step two of consolidation is kind of hard, but as you practice it more, it will become easier. It just has to do with 
using your motor pathways more than your sensory pathways. One of the most practical things that you can do is teach a topic. So let's say you just read something and uh, you've understood it very well. Instead of keeping the book away and out of your sight for two weeks, teach that topic once. What that will do is that you will notice as soon as you start teaching anything is that that topic will tend to stay in your brain for a lot of longer duration because you're mentally preparing yourself like what if I'm asked a particular question from this topic or what if I'm asked something else from this topic. So the end result is you are getting something which has the answers to all the questions and it is the best form of revision not just for you but also for the person who is listening most likely they will be your friends so it has a lot of emotions as well as you can see the fear of teaching it wrong the anxiousness of starting it all and the doubt that arises in between of course there will be mistakes when you start teaching a topic in the first place but the thing is it's your friends nobody's going to judge you for it and Sooner or later, you'll correct those mistakes and those things which you mistook in the first place are now corrected forever. Every one of us is a teacher. Every human being is a teacher. And teaching information can be as simple as telling your next roll number about a bacteria while sitting in a microbiology lab or telling your brother how the human eye works or perhaps telling somebody to start a YouTube channel with the topic Spinal Nerve. All that it requires is starting something new. Listen to this. When we use simple, uncomplicated words, it frees us and the other person in order that we can transform our information much more freely. Big words and business talks cripples us from actually getting the information to the other side. What I mean by this is whenever you're teaching something, Use as simple words as you can, like you're teaching a child. And if you can't use simple words to break down complicated topics, then there's a room for improvement. And find whatever that room for improvement is. One of the reasons that I was able to score good in the first year was because I distinctly remember every single time the examinations were coming I used to call up my friend and we used to discuss every single topic that was relevant before the examination itself no matter if the examination is the next day we used to like uh, have some time for ourselves so that we could have a better discussion so discussion is one of the most important things and if you really look into it discussion is nothing but you teaching a topic in exchange for them teaching you a topic you see i understand that not everybody has friends who are very open to their uh, studies like i have so the thing is you don't actually need a lot of people to have this even if you don't have anybody, you have yourself. So record audio messages, like draw diagrams, make sketches. Just remember to add a motor component to your work. And it is exactly at this step that I break the vicious cycle. And now my cycle becomes read, understand, teach. Find your mistakes, correct them, repeat. So my friends, this is how you break the vicious cycle. The interplay of sensory with motor is what you need to have when you're trying to learn something. Imagine it like acquiring knowledge is entering the maze and being able to explain it is finding your way out. The more you do it, the less likely you are to get lost in the maze. This is the second layer of information. Now you've done everything from your side and this is the point where you have to exploit the nature and the pattern of the examination because every single examination has a pattern and here you have to apply the magic of knowing what is important and what is not important so that you can give the weightage to one and not so much to the other what I like to do myself is mark my book with this plastic thingies and then just look at all the markings and then go over it multiple times you see the pattern of the examination is more or less the same every year but for those few years when the pattern will be atypical, you have to be prepared. That means whenever you are reading an important topic three to four times, make sure to revise the non-important topics once or twice. Because that would form at least a baseline foam that if you were to fall on, you would not die. And mostly the papers that you will be facing in every institute will be mostly from the previous year papers. 
so you have done every single step you have read everything you have understood everything you have taught everything and now everything is in your mind the ultimate thing is the way that this information which is present in your brain is translated into the paper because in the end if you know a lot of stuff here you should be able to uh, like re reproduce that into the paper and if you are aiming for a written examination then mind this don't go into the examination hall without first writing the paper once at least in your own place the reason is at the examination hall you will not spontaneously have the estimation of time you don't really want to have the first time writing the question answers and you don't really want to be in a position where you can't think clearly because all of this is very new to you so my last point here is just make a copy which has question and answers question and answers of all the important things that you listed out this copy of important things will have everything including diagrams flow charts mnemonics and all that you need to reciprocate in your examinations and yes this should be an add on to your notes you can use your notes but i suggest you use this because question and answers you can just revise that and reproduce it as it is on the examination while as if you are preparing for an mcq based examination such as neat then i would suggest replacing this copy which has question and answers with a copy that has all your mistakes and that i like to call as the mistake book so the mistake book is a concept which a relative of mine told me about when i was uh, reading for neat and since then it has completely changed my mind on how we can record our mistakes and be better versions of ourselves the basic ideology is here the same okay uh, that is whenever you commit a mistake uh during solving an mcq you just write that mistake down as it is inside your mistake book and whenever you read your mistake book you see that those mistakes you which you have already made and hence you will never make them again hey everyone my name is anuj i'm a second year mbbs student at gmc nagpur and thank you so much for watching my video if this video even added a tiny bit of value to your life please give it a thumbs up because it means so much more than anything and if you really liked it please subscribe to my channel as it gives me all the motivation that is required to produce this time consuming videos but your love and support makes up for all of that again thank you so much for watching and stay safe stay healthy stay happy until next time i'll see you soon